Hey, uh, folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Sid Meier's Civilization VI. And this time, we are not going to be pacifists. Last game, um, kind of, sort of by accident, we ended up with a perfectly pacifist run as Vietnam. Did not get in a single war. No one declared on us. We didn't declare on anyone. And it may have been my fastest deity victory ever when we sort of accidentally won a diplomatic victory. That's not even what we were intentionally or originally going for. But uh, the opportunity presented itself and then, boop, very quick, very... Fairly easy, I would say, uh, diplomatic run as Vietnam. But we're going to be a little bit more aggressive this time. First, I do want to address, I'm, I've added another mod. So I, I uh, the mods I run on here, I, uh, I run better espionage screen and better trade screen. They're pretty minimal um, user interface improvements to those screens. They're not really the end all and be all in the world, but they're pretty handy. The one I can't live without is more lenses here, mostly because it adds a builder lens view to the, uh, to the game, which makes it so much easier to find tiles that I want to improve with builders, especially with me and, uh, you know, having to enter squint mode to see, you know, just basic stuff that's right in front of my face. Um, having the, um, the builder lens really illuminate things is great. And then someone on Twitter, I think it was on Twitter, uh, pointed out this Hillier Hills mod after the last run. This is going to be my first time playing with this one. I don't know who to credit because Twitter sucks for searching. I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe a week and a half ago, but I couldn't find uh, find where it was. Or maybe it was on Discord. I don't know. But someone had suggested this Hillier Hills mod to make it a lot easier to see hills in game, which seems like a pretty good idea. So nothing that's changing gameplay in any way whatsoever, but certainly stuff that makes our life easier. So we are going to go for a aggressive militaristic game this time. And I think there's no better person for that than Gandhi. No more Mr. Passive Resistance. Hey, if um if you've never watched the Weird Al movie UHF, first of all, just get off the channel. Leave. I never want to see you again until you go and watch Weird Al's movie UHF. And then you can come back and it's fine. Um, but uh, in it, it's a movie about running a, a TV station, basically. Uh, and there's trailers for these fake movies, including Gandhi 2, uh, which is, you know, kind of a Rambo-esque kind of vibe. But we're going to go with Gandhi here uh, because, of course, the the sort of meme in civilization is that he's ultra aggressive, uh, in particular with nukes in the late game. The story is that the used nuke number did a negative overflow uh, back in Civ 1. Apparently that's not actually the situation, but yes, Gandhi in uh, in the AI is quite nuke happy, otherwise quite a pacifist. We're going to be playing on day to difficulty. Um, we're going to go with epic game speed, which I think is, uh, is quite a nice thing. I was trying to decide, <coughs> excuse me, what map to play on. Um, I think I am going to play on continents again. Um, and the reason, because I considered we could do Pangea, we could do various things. What I like about continents is that it does force you to do naval stuff. Well, not force, but, you know, there's there's some value in doing naval stuff. But at the same time, you don't get to just um, abuse the naval stuff versus the AI like you could do on, say, Archipelago or something like that. So it seems like it's fairly good balance. I'm going to go with a uh, standard map size. Thank you very much. And we're going to turn on the new Barbarian Clans mode. So this has just been released. The February 2021 update has just dropped and uh, has introduced, in addition to a, a handful of balance changes, um, this Barbarian Clans mode. So it replaces standard Barbarian tribes with a diverse set of clans, each with its own terrain and combat preferences. Additionally, the mode introduces new player actions for peaceful interactions with Barbarians that provide increased strategic options. I don't know if we'll be taking the strategic option. We'll see. Apparently, um, barbarian encampments could upgrade to city-states, uh, depending on how things go. I'm also going to turn on the monopolies and corporation mode because um, it's kind of interesting and it's not like uh, a huge game change. We've never done a campaign with Heroes and Legends. I'm going to have to at some point. Um, but other than that, we're going to keep things as is. I'm not going to pick my opponents or anything. We're just going to go ahead and get it started. And we'll let Seeny Beanie do his thing here in the intro in a moment. I really should move this game to an SSD. It doesn't matter once it's playing, right? But it would improve the load times. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Be kind, Gandibapu. And you will find yourself surrounded by true friends. Keep the Indian people safe, guarding them with magnificent elephant warriors. Your faith will guide you to peace and harmony. Keep your mind open and be the change you want to see in the world. 
Thank you very much there, Sini Beanie. Let's uh, let's jump into the game and we'll look at uh, India and Gandhi's abilities in the uh, Civilopedia because we can get a little bit more information over there. What do we think of this start? Oh man, those hills are definitely hillier. So much chunkier. Much, much, much easier to see. Oh yeah, that's going to be a huge improvement for me. Um, and honestly, I, I really think the hills should have been hillier in Civ 6. I, th I think it was a design fault and I'm a little surprised they never changed those visuals. Just to make them a little bit more punchy. Um, especially compared to Civ 5, you know? This is a little closer, I think, to Civ 5 Hills. All right, let's open the Civilopedia. And we're going to start by looking up India. Boom, over here. So, our unique ability here as India is Dharma. Our, our cities get the follower belief from two different types of things. So, receives follower belief bonuses in a city from each religion that has at least one follower. So the more religions are present in a city, the more benefits we will get. We also gain amenity for every religion with one follower. Um, missionaries have plus two spread. So this is useful if we have our own religion. And we also have increased religious pressure from our trade routes. Now, we are not going to be funding uh, or founding a religion. I guess we're not going to be funding it either. We're not going to be founding a religion here because while uh, India does quite well with a religion, it is, of course, fairly difficult to do on deity and slow down other aspects. And we really don't want to slow down our military here because that's going to be our vibe. We'll let other people found their religions, send their religion to us, and we'll still get some benefits out of that. Um, the next thing, I guess, uh, actually, let's look at Gandhi's ability. <clears throat> so Satyagraha, I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced, but, you know, plus five faith for each civilization, including ourselves, they have met that has founded a religion is not currently a war. So while we're at peace with people, we get a ton more faith. And then opposing civilizations receive double the awareness for fighting against Gandhi. What's interesting with this is while Gandhi doesn't really have, Gandhi and India doesn't really have um, traits that are are sort of warmongery, right? This is actually going to be, I think, quite effective because while we're in a war, our opponents are going to get double war wariness. And as a result, the, the AI, I believe they weigh this when it comes to uh, negotiating peace. So the AI is going to be much more willing to peace out and I think much more willing to give us stuff in a peace um, because of war wariness. So this actually should help us in our negotiations, I think. Uh, if we pop back over to India, uh, military units, we do have a special military unit, the Varu. It replaces the, um, oh, hold on, does it replace anything? Or is it just a new one? Maybe, it, maybe it's just a new one. Um, what's amazing about this thing is it does have this minus five combat strength to adjacent units, and I believe it stacks. I believe multiple Varu will generate multiple minus five combat strengths to adjacent units. Um, and this is really, really quite strong. The thing is, most of our fighting versus the AI, the real the real advantage that humans tend to have fighting the AI tends to be in the best usage of ranged units. So it's not like I'm going to wildly depend on the Varu, especially it upgrades to tanks, which is not necessarily a unit I'm going to be relying on heavily either. I tend to prefer uh, straight up melee units backed by ranged units, but we'll certainly build some. And, and I mean, having a tank or two, a, a fast use, moving unit is quite handy for um, helping to take cities. Now, the Varu themselves only move at a speed two, so they're not terribly speedy here. Uh, 40 melee strength. We need horseback riding for it. Um, we, I'm sure we will make use. I think when they become cores and armies, I don't think like an army of Varu doesn't have like minus 15 combat strength. I think it's still the minus five, but at least last time I played, I believe multiple Varu units did stack this penalty. So I think it's going to be very, very, very powerful. We'll see what our timing is for it. We also have special infrastructure, our step well, so we can build this. This is a builder improvement, uh, plus one food, plus one housing. So we can get our cities a lot bigger. We get uh, bonus faith if it's adjacent to a holy site. I don't know how many holy sites we're going to build. I suspect we'll build at least one because some extra faith generation is pretty handy. Although we're going to get it passively with just our civilization ability. Uh, but, you know, the ability to great buy great people and a couple other little things from time to time, depending on what religion people spread to us, maybe we'll build a lot of holy sites because uh, there'll be, you know, we're going to build Watts or, or, or something like that. Um, and we can faith buy those. But I don't know if it's going to be a big thing. Bonus to food if it's adjacent to farm might be really handy. 
Um, additional, and yeah, we get more housing faith and food as we advance through the tech tree. Uh, and oh yeah, don't lose food next to a drought. So that's pretty handy. They can't be built next to each other. That's okay. I think this is a pretty good improvement for us to build. I suspect we will build a, f a few. And yeah, with faith and professional sports, we will, or feudalism and professional sports, we will get some extra stuff going on. So, um, I mean, I don't think we're not going to build it, but I don't think they're going to be the end all and be all. We're still going to have to evaluate tiles for their other value. And of course the, uh, well, not the latest patch because the latest patch is the barbarian one, but the previous patch added the preserve, uh, district, which we found out was incredibly powerful in our last run. Uh, we'll see exactly how reliant we are on it. We did discover a new continent right away, which is handy. Um, we're going to settle on a hill because we should be able to, um, actually, I guess because it's a grassland hill, I don't think we'll keep the extra production because it's going to chop the woods, but it's still a nice defensive location. We're not adjacent to any resource, so we will have to get some border expansions before we can improve, you know, the cattle and the stone and things. Um, it's probably still okay because it's going to be a while before we get our first builder anyway. So our borders should push out naturally, especially because it's our capital. Hmm. So our capital won't get to work this rice, but our next city will. I think we might end up putting a city, for example, over here. So start next to one rice. Uh, there's going to be maize over here, and we can build some nice farming triangles or do build the, se the, the, the step well over here. I think I'm okay with settling in place. So we're going to found our city. Yes, it'll remove the woods. And bam. Era score from the river. And welcome to Delhi. Um, in terms of production, so it is it is deity, so we are definitely going to need archers sooner rather than later. But normally, you know, we look at, well, what kind of improvements can we do? We do have cattle right away. That actually is pretty convenient, because I think what we'll do is we'll start with animal husbandry, which will also reveal horses. Uh, we'll be able to build our pasture on the cattle, and then it puts us in a position to move towards archery as the need requires. As per usual, I would very much love to start with a scout. However, on deity, there's such a risk that you just instantly lose the game to a deity sieve that you spawn near because they start with extra units. So I feel I have to go warrior and then into slinger uh, for our start. It's, you know, not, not what I would love, but it's what we're gonna have to do. Um, our, the one thing we've got going for us is our initial production is gonna be really nice with these four value tiles over here. So we're gonna get decent growth and decent production right from the start. I guess I'll uh, move north a little bit more here. Oh, yeah, well, certainly to the Goody Hut, so we can cross over that next turn. That's going to be fine. Long River. Okay, Re Eureka military tradition. Not a big deal, because you get that Eureka from dispersing a barbarian outpost, so, um, and we're, we're certainly going to do that. So that uh, Goody Hut effectively gave us nothing. Uh, speaking of barbarians... Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe the uh, maybe dispersing the encampments isn't as easy as before. We found Muscat. We were the first person to do it, so we did get an envoy out of that. Um, the scout ended up going north. I wonder where the barbarian encampment is. What I think I'm going to do is I'm I'm not going to go too far with my warrior, although I am tempted to go right over here. He is far enough away that he's not going to wake up on me. Uh, I like to scout around in a circle first of all because it makes it easier to figure out our you know our our first extra city placement and the other thing is there's a good chance the barbarians are going to spawn all over us so we need to um, have spotted the territory because then we can see the camps when they appear so i think that's going to be very important for us to do something like that i think i'll go this way buenos Aires, hello um okay so in terms of city placement we are you know obviously going to be a little hemmed in over here but it's not bad because uh these also provide buffers against um ai sibs as well as, I'm going to go here just to try to engage the scout, um, as well as giving us protection from um, other civilizations. And actually, this is this is quite nice, because we can plop a couple of cities in here and really, I, I suspect, be uncontested, which is kind of nice. So we should definitely look into scouting south now to uh, maybe look put a first city over there if we can, because this space should be okay for us later. Um... I think I'm still going to swing over this way. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch that scout. So we're just going to do this. Kelly's going to grow in a couple more turns. Cross over here. Yeah, these are going to really help keep some of the barbarians in check. They can spawn over here, of course. But... Uh, yeah, let's get up on this hill. Oh, hello, Cardiff. Huh. Now I'm starting to worry. Is there too many? 
It is nice. I'm betting we were the first to meet all of them except Hatusa. So there's an AI over here. Oh, we get the free envoy, and it's a nice way to get a little bit of information in terms of how crowded your neighborhood is. Because you can see who's met what. Right, hop through. We've got the new unit. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for a slinger. I'll, although, you know what? Maybe we're not in that much trouble. Although, it's nice to get the uh, archery, Eureka. Another city-state. Big desert over here. Hello, Singapore. Now... Even though we're going militaristic, we're actually quite happy to not have an immediate neighbor. Because they start with such an edge, and having to fight an early war sto slows us down so, so much. Um, I'll grab mining, because we do have the stone over here that we're going to want to quarry. So with the desert in Singapore over here, I'm not really worried about an AI expanding in this direction. Let's check the water here. Huh. Alright. Hello, Coupe. Uh, it's an honor to meet you. Yes, exchange information on capitals. You're down over here, so again, that's giving us a lot of space. I'm starting to worry that it might be too much space. Ah, hello. Treat with the ghost fish clan. Bribe? Hire Quadrine. Spend gold to attack another nearby. Hmm. Or possibly, you're just our first target. Which I think is exactly what's going to happen. How come I can't attack you? Are you in a hill? Oh, you're in woods. Are you really? I don't see any trees, but alright, I'll take your word for it. I mean, the major defeat's not a massive concern because... Oh, there we go. Hello. Vikings! Alright, well... That's fairly close. It'll be interesting to see what's in this space over here. You're gonna denounce me right away. Oh! Is this a precursor to war? I mean, you're not that close, but you might send some units over towards me. Well... Okay, I guess we are going to get Ford settled. Huh. You've got a lot of units nearby. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to gamble that we don't get attacked right away. Because, um... I'm going to build her first. Uh, because we have we have to play our game. If we get attacked, then we re-re-roll and that, that's the way it is. His best. But he's not running straight no, at us. No. Alright, we're going to take Discipline. I guess I could have waited a turn for that. And God King, because we do still want a Pantheon, of course. I don't know which one we're going to go for. Um, I, hold on, I thought... Oh, I guess that pop-up was just our initial continent. Alright, so you can just rest. And the Barbarians don't really rest, unless something has changed with the way these Barbarians play. Swing back around this way. The Thar Desert. Kapiti. Um, yeah, you're already getting rebellion pressure. Now, you're going to grow pretty quickly, but... That is interesting. Oh, that's rude. I don't think I can kill you. Uh, wait, no. It looks like we should. Perfect! There's our archery Eureka. We'll probably research um, archery next, actually. Oh, these guys. That's That hurt scout has found us. That's interesting. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'm pop this. Wait, what? Wait, what? Okay, I so I missed that aspect of the patch notes. 
deserves more credit than the wife ever could. I was worried for a second, but no, this is Buenos Aires, so they're going to take care of that thing for me. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get the archery going. We might settle, like, right over here. I don't know. Oh, there we go. So it is this. Raid clan. Earn gold. The outposts will remain attacked and lose 10 points towards city-state conversion. Clans can be raided once every 10 turns. Or we can disperse it. Well, let's... R Presumably I can raid and then disperse. Because money's pretty good. I wonder if they'll actually attack it. I was going to say because it's in my borders. Yeah, they did. Unit fled reprisal. Oh! So then they spawned a replacement. But they might get attacked by Norway here. I guess I'll get up on the hill for vision. Actually, I don't think we get fresh water access here, do we? On the end, I think it has to be adjacent. I don't think this counts as fresh water access. Settler for sure. Fires have started. Okay. We're not being bothered here. Um, I guess I'll pull back a little, actually. I just want some vision here to bust barbarians. Wait one more turn. Yeah. That's fine. You sit over here. Settler is coming. Oh, there's another Barbarian camp there. The Three Sails Clan. I wonder, do they still spawn the way they used to? Horseback riding is where we get our Varu from, which doesn't need any uh, specific resource either, which is kind of nice. Yeah, no, they did spawn there. Okay. Wasn't sure if it was just the tile visibility, although I don't know why we'd suddenly gain vision over that tile, so it's definitely a new one. Um, we don't have irrigation. I think we will just mine this. We can get up to our improved three tiles thing. Uh, oh, you spawned there. Interesting. And also, where the heck did you come from? Well, there's going to be no shortage of barbarians. This guy's still losing loyalty, although not very quickly. But if we slap down a couple extra cities, that should help. Did you... Hmm. do this. I'm not afraid of... Wait, why is this red? I assume this meant it had been damaged. But, okay. And you spawned in too. Alright, I'll sit here. I'll do a fortify until healed. These guys are going to do some damage. You are quick. Well, I'm going to have to chase you to figure out where the hell you went. You came from. Uh, let's go here. We'll cross the river up north. And you do have a promotion ready. Okay, I think he got killed. I'll just promote now. Uh, and we're going to take volley for sure. him. I would still like to be the person who gets in there. Okay, Stonehenge will be built. That's fine. We're not competing for that. We're not looking to make our own religion. Boom. There's our three tiles, so Craftsman has been boosted. I'm hoping we can just be the ones to clear it next turn if they attack. Oh, they didn't attack. Alright, well... We'll probably just lose the ability to clear it, but I might have to be okay. I might leave a unit here just because the AI is always going to have to go around to get through here now, and we're just going to annoy them. There. They insta-dispersed. It felt like like they, they attacked, and as part of the attack they moved in, they could disperse right away. Could I have hit the disperse button immediately, or does it work slightly differently for the AI than the human? It's possible, because the AI may not treat with the barbarians... That might be a difference. 
guy. Hello, Pericles. Nice to meet you. All right. I shot an arrow into the air. Archery is done. Um, so horseback riding riding is available. I don't know if we need to rush the Varu. I think getting right hing underway might be useful. That and irrigation. It'd be nice to get a boost of irrigation. Uh, but can't farm a resource because I actually need a uh, I need irrigation for this. We can turn you into an archer. I think I'll leave you out here for now, though. John hey, Curtin. John Curtin. Nice to see you. John Curtin tends to be a pretty strong sieve. I think they've got good emphasis on science and things, and it does uh, it does good things for them. Skill without imagination. Um, we don't need Ilkum right now. We still don't have a Pantheon, and I think discipline is still worthwhile. So we're not going to make any changes. Our goal, of course, as always, is to get to political philosophy as quickly as possible. Uh, so we'll just start working on foreign trade for now. We can always stop maybe in the Eureka range. Don't know how long it'll take us to find another continent. Okay, I think I'm going to go immediately into another settler. We need to get our cities going. We could settle on the rice. I guess I don't have to be on the river because we've got a lake here. What if we settle on this marsh? It gives us more good tiles now, but it's still a, potentially a Petra city. I don't want to, I don't want to get anyone too excited uh, because we're really not going to be emphasizing wonders here. I think I like that location there. And then we still get to farm the rice, uh, which will give you Eureka, which is nice. We've got enough money, we'll be able to buy a builder here right away. Yeah, that's that's very pleasant, I think. Um they could declare war on us to take this. That would be a little annoying. Okay. We need to head over here. Maybe I'll... How much would it cost to upgrade you? 90? Okay, we'll move into friendly territory. I'll archerize you. And then we'll send you out. I don't really expect that they'll go. We could... You know, it would be pretty miserable if they took it. So I'll do this. At least we'll be in a position to retake. Now, now we're guarding it, so it's going to be okay. Yeah, let's archerize you. Oh! That was a city-state quest. Well, that was unexpected. I know there's few people. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, they're getting positive loyalty now. Um, they must... Yeah, they got a governor already. Which makes sense, because they do start with four free techs and civics, so they get a pretty big boost towards stuff like that. I'm going to found a city here. Removing the marsh towel. That's fine. Hello, Mumbai. Um, we are going to perch... We're not going to purchase a builder. It's slightly more expensive than expected because epic speed. Right. Um. I guess you're going to start building a builder. We'll ha we will have to switch to Ilkum soon. Now, I don't feel the need to keep a unit inside of Mumbai. What I might want to do is plan on expanding over here. So maybe we'll guard that area. All right, now that you're ready, I mean, there's still going to be vision problems with the uh, the train over here, so we'll still have to get you pretty much adjacent to stuff. So we'll do that and that. I don't know, we might, we might just settle back here. Or we settle over here, actually, to put more pressure on Kapiti. That might be the nice thing to do. Listen, we're dealing with the barbarians. Shush you. It just spawned. Settle down. Oh, well, yeah, we can't do city-state stuff yet. Atusa declared war on Pericles. Oh, they're going after city-states, which is rude. Uh, we're going to Dark Age, which might make it hard for us to flip Kapiti, but our cities should be safe. Um, now, that's interesting. Let's just sit here for a sec. We have to buy some tiles. No man ever wetted. I don't know if I can get in a position to block where we might settle. I, I think the answer is no. Oh, someone cleared that for me. Thanks. Papon Hello, the Gauls. Alright. Uh, we actually might get a normal age. I might prefer Dark Age so that we can Golden Age. On the other hand, the loyalty pressure is going to be fairly appealing. Lands are quiet and peaceful and weak. 
Well, dude, listen. Again, I don't get to start with a bunch of free stuff. I'm not like you guys. It'd still be nice to see, spot another continent here. To get the boost to foreign trade. Alright. That's fine. It would be really nice to get the stone in Mumbai. But we would have to buy quite a lot of stuff to get there. Um, hopefully he's got some other resources at the south that'll pop first. I guess maybe we'll take the opportunity to scout down here before they actually um, settle in. I guess I'll just yeah, I'll get just as much vision of them here. Stop some barbarians from spawning there. Yeah, every spot there. And actually, maybe I'll move you to this hill so we can protect this area. Mumbai is growing. I didn't actually check what tiles you were working. Yeah. I mean, we could do more food, but I don't know. I think that's actually all right. Soon we will be able to buy a builder. We're definitely in a dark age. Yeah, your delegation's fine. Um... We're going to put some work into here just to optimize for, uh, what is it, inspiration, the boost? Yeah, inspiration. Tusa. All right. You stay in spot mode. It's possible if we Dark Age, a city over here will actually have a loyalty pressure problem. Hopefully not, because we are close to Delhi. We will get a governor title from potentially finishing one of these civics, although it's a little while away. Alright, we'll bring you home now. For defensive purposes. Uh, early Empire got boosted. That's nice. That comes after. Okay, what is our Pantheon? Some of these got rebalanced, by the way. Um, maybe... Pastures? We're not actually going to generate a ton of culture, because we're probably not going to be building theater squares. So getting culture from God of the Open Sky would be nice. We've got one, two, and a third pasture site available in our starting setup. I'm kind of tempted to do that. I think... I think I like that very much. I think we're going to God of the Open Sky. Excellent. Alright, let's put you back in Mumbai. Uh, peace deals, yada yada yada, civic boosts, uh huh. Pantheon founded, hooray. This is an extra or era score that is probably not going to come out anything. Um, we might actually want to suggest some friendship. No reason not to have friendship right now. I mean, I want to play aggressive, but it's going to take us a little while before we can actually get military happening. Um, and if we can, you know, we don't want to be at war with everyone simultaneously. I mean, eventually we'll start getting some bad guy points. Um, here, I think the thing to do is free inquiry. I tend to be pretty good at popping those, maybe more than pen, brush, and voice. But either way, get some error score from various things. Um... We are going to get the Eureka to Irrigation fairly soon. In fact, I think I have enough money now to purchase a Builder, which I'm going to do here. And then use that to farm the rice, which will Eureka Irrigation, which will also give me an Air Score, which is all very nice. Um, we can drop out a God King. We have a Pantheon. We're going to run Ilkum. I think Discipline is still going to be good. All right, and with that, folks, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in here. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm very much looking forward to this series. Um, I don't know when the war trigger will put. We actually have very little place to expand early on, but that's okay. I was only planning, I, was, I actually wanted to discuss this, um, to go to maybe four cities. If I was doing a pacifist run, I, I really would hope to get, you know, maybe five or six cities quite quickly since I'm not taking more. But if we get to like four decently producing cities and then start um, building a military and then start stonewalling from that, that won't be too bad. Um, once we have a lot of military, we might start to curse the fact that there's this wall of city states to the north of us. I guess we could always declare on one of them. Uh, but it's not like we don't have targets. We've got Kapiti over here. We've got um, Norway territory, you know, throughout here. Then maybe we keep going west into Australia. I don't know. Um, something like that.
we'll see how it goes. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm looking forward to this one. If you are new to the channel, of course, subscribing uh, helps a lot. Do hit those likes and comments and all those things. It makes it makes a huge difference to channels, which is why YouTubers are always saying it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.